Okay. <gasps> Yay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you do in- your intro first? I mean, I dive in like this and then I intro you. Like Got I it. do it separately. Because we're, we're doing, doing it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that, we're going to sound so crazy. <laughs> I mean, you never do these. I never do these. Um, I've been wanting to do it for you because I know the conversation is going to go in so many different directions. <laughs> well, thank you for like feeling safe with me because the most safe with you. Good. That and look means, where we are. I your mean, your beautiful new home. A lot has changed for so both much of has us. Changed. Like thinking back to when we first met, which I don't think we've ever really shared. And people are going to not understand us. <laughs> no, because we met in a visa. We did meet in a visa. But I was already like, I was obsessed with your overalls. Mm-hmm. Like died for them. And then I saw you. And it's so funny because I think back now and I'm like, I was a little, like I could have been, could have been a little creepy. I was like, hey, <laughs> like I was No, just but we so... had mutual connections and we had probably met in passing before. But, but you didn't know. We never did. You didn't never really did. know me. Like you, you were kind of like, That was truly like, our first hey, time meeting. I was a little, I came on strong, which now, <laughs> which now yeah. I'm like, okay, whoa. Like well, take I was it down fresh off of a breakup and coming into this trip with all guys, I was the only girl on the trip. And then I found you and I think Tina Marie was there. And yes. it's, you were like, I'm going to help you. You like somehow knew I needed help in a lot of different ways. And you're like, I got you. Well, yes, I did. But I think it was, well, first of all, we like went to Pasha. We like immediately met. We like went out. You were like, come to the bathroom. And we were like fixing ourselves in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. It was kind of just like an immediate girls, girl, dancing. Girls, girl. Like it was just... It was easy. Mm-hmm. And then I remember we we went to, I think we were at Leo. We were having dinner and you and I were like talking, like really getting to know each other. And you said something like, you know, I, I don't love the place I'm in. And and mm-hmm. I was like, well, tell me more. And just naturally what it's like being yeah. a health coach without ever even realizing. And you weren't coaching yet. Or a little I, bit. I but. wasn't. I didn't have my own platform. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. I was in such a different place. Well, no, I did, but it was like the first, the first iteration. First build, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But there was just something about you because I think for me, I knew you online and having this like vulnerable moment with you in person, like I like saw you. I think I cried to you, no? You did. Like outside of the restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. I saw you and I was like, it just, <laughs> for real, I, we did, we went outside and yes, I think I, I had to make you like ground because you were like feeling super anxious about mm-hmm. a situation. And it's just something I, I've, I, feel this way so strongly when I like see something, I'm like, I can help, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and then I have to share this because it was hilarious. And I do have pictures of the shoes I was wearing and you were like, and I'm going (laughs) to help you with your shoes. (laughs) I was like, we'll fix that. I was like, all right, girl. I mean, you definitely introduced me to some of my diehard favorite brands. Like Ray. Like Ray, (laughs) Frankie. I'm hello wearing. We were what? We were what right now. Yeah, we're wearing matching jeans. We're wearing the same jeans. We walked. High rise, wide leg. Plug. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they're really good. Actually, I've been living in in them since they launched. But thanks. Yeah, so it started. So we met in a visa. Yes. And then we got back to New York and we started training together. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. have never worked with anyone privately, mm-hmm. but you, you also, I think one thing about you is you're such a go-getter. Like you followed up with me. You were super like mm-hmm. persistent and it was just like, okay. Cause I'm definitely more like, I never want to come on too strong except mm-hmm. for my hello. <laughs> and, and it was like, we got right to work. We did. Yeah. You were coming over twice a week, mm-hmm. sometimes with Babies, sometimes not. Oh, right. Oh, (laughs) Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin, I think, came over like a few times. And we would train together. We would talk about the way I was speaking to myself. That was the first time you taught me that diet's a dirty word and all those things, like the the early on Melissa sayings and just totally changed my perspective and my outlook on myself, 
on food, on the way my body looked, on my personal confidence, like everything. I mean, I like look at you now and could fully cry. It's insane. Just because you've just blossomed into such, you've really evolved. Thank you. Like, and not that it's, I think, you know, I think back now at that time too, just to put it into perspective, I had, you know, I was really starting in the space. When we started working together, not that numbers matter, but to maybe put it into context, I had I had any I had like what fifty thousand mm-hmm. followers maybe, and not that that was anything at all, but there was this moment that I, I felt like you know working with you, I, I immediately felt like I wanted to help in any way that I could, mm-hmm. but you also like gave me so much when we were working together. I mean, you were the first person to ever like share me. Yeah. And, but I was so happy to, because you were making such a difference in my life and I wanted other people to know that so that they would start following. And they did. They did. You caught on like wildfire. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I still have, I still have people to this day that are like, when when Danielle was sharing you, like Mm -hmm. there was a time and I, you know, I still follow you, so. I love that. Thank you. I have like so much endless gratitude for you doing that because I think, you know, when you are just starting out, it it is, those are the moments when that really help you, like the support. Yeah. And I've had people throughout my career that have really helped boost me. And I always thought like, pay it forward and sharing is caring and just share the love, especially with all these new younger creators it's just so important to to set a good example and not to be like selfish with your following and think of it as competition because it's not. And I really am such a big proponent of like the creator economy succeeding and seeing other creators really grow their own businesses and own their own businesses. And that's what I always preach. And so as much as I always can, I've always been like, let me throw you a tag. Let me get you some social love. And if I authentically really love someone and what someone's doing or something, I want to share about it, whether I'm being paid to or not. I think that's why brands love working with you. Or why my followers trust me as well. Right. Which is important because I wouldn't have had a 13-year career and be able to still do this through all the ups and downs if I didn't have like a trustworthy relationship with my followers. Because otherwise, like, they'll never believe anything I'm linking to. Oh, not at all. Can we please talk about how, I know a lot of people know how you started, but Mm -hmm. just to- The spiel. Give give it some context, because it's quite a story. Yeah, so we were what started back in 2010 as a street style blog. I was like a photographer running around FIT, photographing what girls were wearing and then sharing it on my blog for basically the purposes of providing this daily source of outfit inspiration for getting dressed in the morning. And then as Instagram came to be, turned the camera on on myself, was photographing my personal style, was a very early adapter for Instagram. Very. Very early. And then sort of, you know, continue to put the proof in the pudding of that we are the most modern source of advertising and why brands should pay a certain amount for sponsored content and link sharing and affiliate marketing and all the things that came with it. Um, And so sort of started pioneering the influencer industry amongst many other of the OG influencers and bloggers we were at the time. And then, you know, finally decided that I wanted to own my own product because I was selling so much of other people's products. So started as a collaboration and then um, moved on alone to a standalone brand. We were what? Um, with my business partners. And along the way, you know, had like certain career milestones like Forbes 30 under 30 at the age of 24 and wrote a book and became a New York Times bestselling author. And like some of those like bucket list career milestones that I was really excited to check off. And now my main focus has really transitioned from influencer to brand owner and designer and entrepreneur and really expanding We Were What to become a more household name and be sold at retailers worldwide, but really focus on our direct-to-consumer business first. Um, And we're expanding into three new categories this year, which I'm super excited about. And as well, like my entrepreneurial journey has taken me to really like become an angel investor and advisor for a bunch of different companies, which is something I love and and thrive in that position and really think that the future of my career will go that direction even more. We've talked about this a lot. I definitely see that. 
And, you know, really being able to see how like I can play a really helping hand and not just the promotion of companies, but everything on the back end from, you know, um, branding to like strategic marketing to like all different strategies and influencer marketing and introductions and uh, investments and, and raising for them. And um, it's just been really fun. It's, I love being busy. Yes, you do. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> I know you love to be busy. I'm always working on slowing you down mm-hmm. a little bit and also taking a little bit of my Me own as well, advice. Like. <laughs> but that was one thing that we really connected to because mm-hmm. for me, I was really new in the space. And at this point was, I launched my new platform mm-hmm. when we were working together. And You always had really great advice when it came to like partnerships and things that I wasn't really friends with anyone else who understood. We were able to like bounce a lot off of each other, even with like hiring and salaries and and running a company and having employees. Like there's not that many people that we were able to do that with. Right. And I think that's also something that people, I mean, you share it, but I feel like you don't really share to the magnitude of how involved you are with your business. People see you Mm -hmm. as an influencer, which is amazing. That's how you started, but you're a businesswoman and you're the CEO Mm -hmm. of your business. Yep. Give us like (laughs) how... For real. I mean, for me, it was a lot of understanding. Like when I was in the place when I was like, I need a COO. Mm -hmm. I need someone to, you know, run brand partnerships and all of these tiers that you don't even realize you need. I mean, being a good leader and a great boss is something that I've learned over the years and have grown into. It's definitely not something that I think I've always had like leadership um, in my personality, but I really had to do a lot of work with Stacy, my life coach, even with you, about how to be the best leader and how to be. I learned very early on that there's a difference between being feared and respected. And it's a super important difference and a fine line that I sometimes crossed. And I really wanted to maintain respect and a really great company culture with my team. I wanted them to feel. Um, like there was an open format that they could come to me with things. I'm constantly getting feedback from my team as how I can be a better boss. And I think that that's really important that they don't ever feel like they can't come to me with those things. And so- Do you do it anonym- anonymously? No, we do it in sessions with Stacy. actually. Okay. I have like life coach sessions with my team. And they're also able to go to like Mo or Alexa, like somebody else to bring feedback about a way I've handled a situation, which- I've never responded to with anything but being like, okay, thank you, like noted. And I think that's super important. Like I would never get mad at a team member for giving me criticism. Right. Um, And I think that, you know, being able to take that and adapt, like I always want to become a better version of myself, whether that's in my personal life, as a boss, as a friend, anything. And so I've always taken that approach with my team and, and sort of figuring out also how to let go and put trust into my team has been really important over the years. And I know because me and you are Big so exhale. type A, like so wanting to be in control of everything. And, you know, there are some things that still at the end of the day, like I have to get done myself, but Can you explain what you've delegated? Because I think that is one of the biggest pivotal movement, like moments in moving and progressing. So Mo and I are going on 10 years together. Wow. This August is our 10 year anniversary and she's the COO of the company. Started as my intern assistant, whatever the 20 other roles she's taken on, but she really runs We Wore What alongside me. And she does everything when it comes to brand partnerships, our relationships with other brands, the relationship with my business partners, um, and my day-to-day like scheduling, making sure I get all the content done I need to get done. She basically runs my she life. She does all of that. She runs my life. Well, and then that's Alexa, a lot now. <laughs> I know. Mo does a lot. And then Alexa is my right hand when it comes to brand stuff. So she is the middleman between me and the entire team that runs the brand. So with my business partners and they're the production side of things, the sales team, um, the creative team, the marketing team, the social team, all of that. Alexa sort of plays the middleman there. And then, you know, there's certain people that are like in charge of the social media, the content planning, the marketing, the email and text marketing separately. And we have weekly meetings where I'm shown basically an overview of everything that's happening for the next week, social content. Um, you know, we go through an approval process. So we have yeah, a very like, do this streamlined mm-hmm. process. Um, but everything still at the end of the day gets approved by me. So I really touch everything that you see 
on We Wore What. Even when I design with my team, I have three designers I work with on the swim and active. I have two separate designers that do the ready to wear. This is something I think they're people separate, don't realize that yeah. there's other, desi- like people look at mm-hmm. you as a designer. Yeah, so I provide like inspiration. Like I, I I bring in ideas to them and then they CAD everything up, which are like the digital drawings of everything. And I go through and I say, oh, I'd like that, but like shorten it here or make the sleeve longer here. I could picture it here. And then we start sampling and we get samples in and I'm at all the fittings and I go in and I say, I want it to fit tight in the waist. No, like really tight in the waist or like I want the cups to be smaller. Or I want this or whatever it is. Um, we go through fabric selections. We get strike-offs, which are like when the fabric comes in in the color and I have to approve the color, I want it 20% more red or 20% darker, whatever it is. And there's so many steps. The product so life cycle is basically a year. So like start to finish, these jeans would take a year to design. That's So by the time a collection comes out, it's old news to me already, which is so crazy because then I have to like re-get excited about it. And like, you know, like the tennis and golf collection is launching next week. And you did already, it last year. And we we designed it last year. So maybe this year it would have been a little different. Like I always think like, oh, I wish I did that instead or right. something like that. But that's just nitpicking. Like mm-hmm. other people don't see that. Um, but it's a long process and there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of people involved. And yeah. So many. How many people do you have on your team now? There's eight of us like internally that are working that are like report to me on a day to day. And then throughout the company is 40. And that includes production sales. Right. And it's shared with my business partners and like the other brands that they manage. Is it crazy that when we met, I think there were only it was like, it was like three. It was like yeah. three of us. And yeah. now we're 25 just in-house, not Insane. even including creators and it's so crazy, isn't Go it? Us. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a lot. It's a managing lot. Managing it all. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, you just said something that I, I started working. I don't even know if I told you this, but I started working with this executive coach and it has been- Cool. Oh, I have learned so much about myself, my leadership style. I'm an Enneagram 8. You are definitely up there on the Enneagram if you haven't taken it. I have Active controller. Oh, God. <laughs> You're definitely <laughs> right around there. Do I need to do that? Yes, you do. And it's just made me realize- things that are like strong strengths and then very just mm-hmm. clear as clear can be that are my weaknesses, which has helped me let go and to delegate mm-hmm. more. But one thing you said, I, you know, we have certain meetings a week where I've always looked at them with the team is like, these are approval meetings. But now I am really shifting that perspective where it's input. Like I am, I, like okay. they're approving. Like it's like, I, I yeah. want to work on empowering the team that it's like, this is it. It's in your hands. Like, how would it be a final for you? Yeah. And then it's just input. That's a, that's a great piece of advice as well, because I think I like to go into those meetings and being like, great, everything looks great. Perfect. That's really like what it is. It's more of just seeing like the final touch. But I really, yes, I want my team to feel empowered that like what they show me is pretty much what the final thing is going to be. Yes. It's more so if like, oh, I was planning on sharing that picture on my page, so don't share it on Shop We Were What. Right. It's like little things like that. Yeah. I love those meetings. Those are like, I love those meetings, but it was just one word that she had mentioned to me, she's like, you keep saying approvals and this, like, what if we can? And I was like, wow, I Change feel it lighter. Like it's, it's so. I'm going to take that back. Yes. I Thanks mean, for that. Good. You're welcome. <laughs> That's what this is all about. Just That's cool. Bouncing it off and mm-hmm. sharing this all for everyone. Yeah. But okay. So now it's, you, you know, you've gotten your business to this place mm-hmm. and we, I, I've also been in your life through a couple breakups uh-huh. now. Oh, God. Gotta go there, you know. Here we go. <laughs> but like, honestly. <laughs> the juice. But but not, because I think the thing that I want to highlight more than anything on this conversation mm-hmm. is how I've seen you in a place when you're devastated and feel almost like, how can, like, how is this my life? I thought it was going to be this way. How can I Mm -hmm. move forward to where you are right now? And you've just become (laughs) a massive inspiration for so many people. It's been a big talk on just how you've been able to embrace this chapter. 
How? Yeah. How did we get here? I mean, I think, you know, specifically with my last relationship, which was four years long, it's it's a really long time. And I like totally thought he was the one and that we were going to get married. And I think that since the breakup felt so devastating to me and it was very much a mutual decision and, you know, we're at different places in our lives. And when I was able to, I basically grieved and you were there for like two to three weeks of like heavy, like I didn't share on anything on social during this time. I was crying constantly. Like I had people sleeping over. I couldn't sleep alone. Like you came over a ton. I really needed to feel like the, I needed to grieve the loss of a best friend and and a life that I thought I was going to have. Cause I think, you know, I'm a huge planner and huge. sometimes to my detriment, sometimes it works really well for me, but I really needed to grieve what felt like a totally like unknown different life that I was about to enter into. And then this person that I thought was my person through and through that was going to be there with me till I, till the end of time. And after I did that grieving process, I don't know what and how it shifted, but it just, I'm so grateful for the way that it did. But I realized, A, like there were definitely things I was settling on and I wasn't necessarily in the relationship that I felt like I deserved. And then I just felt free. And this like idea of not knowing what the future holds and and not being able to plan for it and not knowing who I was going to meet and starting to date people, it just felt really freeing to me. And I just kind of like let go of everything. And everyone tells me I have like um, either like this radiating glow, which I love, that's so nice, but this like scent that I'm giving off. (laughs) Like everyone's like, you have this scent. Like you're, because I have a lot of friends who have gone through breakups recently too. And they're just like, how are you doing it? And I'm like, I'm dating. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm loving life right now. (laughs) And I'm just like giving off this energy of like, I'm here, I'm free. I want to meet people. I'm open to meeting people. I'm in a really secure place with myself, which was what I had to work on first before I could start dating, which, you know, granted, it only took me like a month or so, but I felt like- But you've been working on I've been working on myself for so long that the breakup wasn't like, a way for a lot of people say like take time for yourself and really be alone for a while and that's what I told you yeah I you, was like, you did be too alone and I was a like bit. I was like listen the best way to get over someone is to get under someone new <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> not for everybody <laughs> and I'm about- like. I'm like such a mom with you. I'm like, Danielle. (laughs) I know. And everybody told me that. And I was like, listen, that's a little bit of bullshit because it's totally dependent on the person. And I have already put in so much work into myself. And I already felt like I was in such a good place that this just put me almost in a better place. And (laughs) you're looking at me laughing. Dead. (laughs) No, but that's what I I like about you is you are, you're just who you are and no matter what. Unapologetically. Yes. And I think that's, that has been a massive component to your success is like, no matter what people have said, you've just kept going. Yeah. There were so many times in my career and my life where people were like, go dark. And like, you know, through all like the cancel culture stuff that happened during COVID and people were like, go dark for a month and go off social media. And I was like, why? I was like, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not going dark. Like I'm going to maintain the truth and my truth and share authentically with my followers. And listen, there's definitely things that I would have like maybe not shared about as much or like mistakes that I think I made over that time period. But at the end of the day, I was always doing what felt right and true. And and it's, I keep saying authentic. It's such like a corny word now, but it's the truth. And I think that that has helped me to to maintain my career throughout the years. And even with sharing about the breakup, you know, I I really didn't want to for a while. I was not ready. I talked I to you about it constantly. I was shocked that you shared it. And I was like, I just don't know how to share about this. But I felt like I did share so much of my relationship, of that relationship on social media that I almost felt like I owed it to my followers. And I, I don't ever feel like I owe my followers something, but I felt like they deserved to be included on it. And then I thought, if I can finally be in a good place about it, then maybe I can help other people to see it differently and to have a different perspective and to move on. And the amount of messages, thousands that I've received of people being like, you sharing about your breakup has helped me so much, even from other influencers who have taken my lead and have shared about it. Like, it's been really rewarding and like has built, has even 
more built on the sense of community that I feel like I have with my followers. And, you know, we always talk about like, you know, what you put out there is what you receive. And so putting out that sort of positivity is, is brought a lot of positivity back to me and has helped me healed as well. So it's kind of worked like both ways because there's been so many messages of support and love and, and then I just feel free from it now. I mean, yeah. I remember when you shared it and I was like, oh, I always get like nervous whenever yeah. anyone puts out any sort of, you know. It's vulnerable. It's for sure. vulnerable. And and I it's I actually talked to Noah about it. Mm-hmm. Well, he was like, Did you see it? And I'm like, Well, I Noah did. had very strong opinions about me and the relationship. And I love Noah. He's he like, gives really he's big good brother. guy advice. Yeah. Well, he was like, mm-hmm. What do you want? Yeah. In your life. And is this moment right here going to get you there? Like he yeah. cuts right through. Yeah, he's great. Thank you. We love Noah. We love Noah. But <laughs> I I remember like being like, oh, because I think there is this fine line, mm-hmm. right? And it's it's something that I try to really follow intuitively when like, mm, maybe I don't need to share all of that. Maybe yeah. people don't need to know because- you let people in so much and then it just gives them more fuel to build a fire yeah. of their own if they want. And it sets an expectation of like, she always has to share about this. So right. I made it very clear that going forward, I was going to not be sharing about like so much my dating and love life. And it totally depends on the person too, like out of respect. Like I kept my ex's name hidden for four years. Right, which is why. Like, that's a lot. I remember he was, he once was I babe. commented and you were like, <laughs> I deleted it. Yeah, right away, I'm, I'm sure. Like, oh, I'm sorry. And that was I'm not sure. because I didn't want to share his name. It was out of respect for him. Right. Um, which is the way that I sort of will view whatever the future is. Like, I'm not going to say I'm never going to share about our relationship again because if I fall in love and want to share about it, then I might. But right. right now, I think I'm really enjoying myself. And it's I'm showing. enjoying keeping it private. The vibes are clear. <laughs> like, I'm like, can you tell I'm getting really good sex right now? <laughs> yes. We can all tell. And I'm just like, be safe. Like literally yeah, yeah. momming being you on responsible, the safe. I'm being very discreet. <laughs> <laughs> selective. I'm being extremely selective and okay. picky. Good. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm being set up. I'm on like one app, but I don't really use it. I use it as more of a discovery tool versus like connection. No, but I think that's good. It's that's good. what it yeah. should be is it's, discovery. Because it's nice to find people who are not in your world. Right. And I have found that with a, a few people. <laughs> I mean, honestly, life is all about options. Mm-hmm. If there's anything I can say to anyone who is in a space where they're not with someone, like I always tell the girls on my team who are single, I'm like, look at life like a buffet. Mm-hmm. Like you go to the buffet. It's like, okay, maybe you want a little bit of that. And then you're like, but I want, I want to try some of this. But like, actually I like this better. Wait, like, I have a good comparison for this. So there's a book I read a long, long time ago called The Gaggle. And I always believe the way it was about having like a gaggle of girlfriends, but I believe you should have a gaggle of guys. And the you gaggle You do have a gaggle of guys. That like, Some people, some guys like have different purposes in your life. Like maybe this is the guy that you're getting a lot of physical stuff from. And this is the person that's filling your emotional bucket. And this person is filling your social bucket. And this person is who you're going to for career advice. And like, it's okay while you're single to have a gaggle of guys around you. And then, you know, if one relationship grows stronger than the others, then you just start to focus on that more. But like, it's okay, like you said, a buffet to have some options. And I I will say this because I am definitely someone who is a little bit more, how can we say this? I haven't slept with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I do think there is something to be said about being cautious and careful and not giving yourself to everyone. I know I have this conversation with you. I've actually never said this. Yeah, listen, even I'm I'm not saying I'm sleeping with all these people. Like, that's not, and also like sleeping with more, it's just, it's very, that would be very hard to manage, like, and not safe and like dirty. So, (laughs) and listen, I'm a serial monogamous. Like I love monogamy. I've always gone from one relationship to another. So in between those relationships, like that's the time to explore. Like, I know I'll probably be in a relationship in the next two months or three months. Like it's probably going to happen. Right. I was the same. Yeah. Um, And 
for now, this is like the time where I just should be dating multiple people and having fun and safely having fun and responsibly having fun. Yes. Um, which I am. Good. Great. That's just part of adulting. Though. I mean, like, you know, I'm old, like, yeah, yeah, I think it's so important to also send that message out there because, mm-hmm. oh, wow, with all the things that you see on TikTok and oh, everything, yeah, these, yeah. I'm just like, can we reel it in a little bit and teach mm-hmm. these younger generations to be like, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, but like you can be a lady and still be really sexually free. And I This think, is what I liked about your book. And I think that I have always been very like sexually free and out there and confident. And um, I'm like usually the aggressor in a relationship too. Like I'll go for what I want and be like the dominant one first. And you, then like once we're in the relationship, then I like to be submissive, not like only sexually, just also in like personality. Like I like to feel feminine in that way. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being sexual. Just like there's a way to do it safely and um, in a way that's still really respectful of yourself. I love that take. Yeah. And that's why we- it's like sex is great. It, it Listen, it's really great for you too. For mood boosting. It's so good. The glow. I mean, yeah. You sleep better. <laughs> I'm so glad you feel comfortable talking about that because I, I think, I've actually never really talked about it so much, but yeah. I mean, I do feel comfortable. I mean, I love a good vibrator. Like every woman should have a great vibrator. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you've, you've shared some with me. I definitely have. I've <laughs> yeah. sent you links before. I mean, it's just, you're just so like, comfortable and I, and I, yeah. I respect it. But why like, is it so taboo to talk about it? Like I even, I talk to my team sometimes like, about like vaginas. I'm like, do you guys have any questions? Like I rem- I remember like just like, I'm dead. There's there's not so many places to go that it's feels super comfortable to be like, what does this mean if this is happening like down there? And you know, the things that we're like, ooh, ooh, don't talk about that. But right. like they're so normal and like it's like, okay, you why do you have to pee right after sex so that you don't get a UTI? Like these things that like maybe aren't taught to you by anyone, but are super important. And like if I need to balance my pH levels, like what can I take for it? There's like these great like boric acid pills that you can take if you're like, you know, need to balance yourself out down there. Great. There's I love like so this. many things you can do. And I love talking to like my gynecologist about it. And then I love sharing whatever I've learned with my team because they're all young women. And I think that it's super important that they feel like they can come to me about their personal lives as well. Um, and, you know, just be able to have an open format conversation. I think you need to open this up for your people. Like, no, it's great. Yeah. The, I do agree with you. This is, it is something that it has... I mean, I do think th- times have changed and mm-hmm. people are definitely talking about it more yeah. now, but to have someone like yourself, like talk about vaginal health is is a big deal. It's a big deal, especially because no one teaches you about it really. And it's I important know. to know. It's because I think people are embarrassed. Like it's, yeah. but why? But why? Yeah, there's nothing embarrassing about it. I mean, I- It can be uncomfortable, but I just think we have to- the more we talk about it like this and sort of normalize it, the more it will be talked about and comfortable. Yeah. I agree. How did you get to this place? Like, I, I really want to talk about <laughs> just like the work you're doing because I know when we started working together, the biggest thing I really tried to implement into your life was I love the reel you shared recently when you're like, here's a realistic day in my life. First thing, I touch my phone. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're still doing that's fine. But I also I loved that you shared it. It's the reality. It's right. like the way it is. But I mean, I, I'll give you a lot of credit here. Like you and Stacy helped me so much throughout my like self-discovery and, and self-help journey. And I think that it's like part of growing up. It's part of going through a lot of serious shit, whether it's in business or your personal life and taking those things and and them making you a better person, a better boss, a better friend, a better everything and, and learning from them and not like so much drowning in them, but more so like coming up for air after it and and being like, okay, here's what I learned from this. And here's how I can move forward and, and do better next time. And I just think that I... I'm really into just like working on myself. Like I never even sitting here today will think I am the best Danielle that I'll ever be. Like, I think I'm just still becoming that. 
But I think it's also just a part of feeling like really secure within myself, not, a, not as insecure as I used to be, like yeah. accepting me and my body and my personality and my and everything about my life and my family dynamics and my relationship with men and friends and cutting out the negativity, which you all have always done a great job at doing. But I definitely cut out a lot of negative relationships in my life. Like if they weren't serving like a positive anything, nah, no time for that. I mean, I also think just taking it back. I mean, I remember when you, you were so, I mean, it's, I, I just look at you now and I'm like, just like the confidence. And I feel like you had it before, but it was masked with insecurity because you yeah. you didn't love and accept yourself mm-hmm. and you wanted to be and, and feel differently. Mm-hmm. And I remember a lot of what we worked on. I mean, it's it's funny because I feel like when I was even working as a health coach, like the first thing everyone always wants is, diet. Like, yeah. tell me what, what to should eat. I eat. Yes. That's always, and I was like, okay, let's like take it back. And mm-hmm. it was a lot of getting into your mindset and how you viewed yourself and mm-hmm. how- It all starts from within. Yeah. Oh, but like you were so critical of yourself and so hard on yourself. And, and the one thing that we tried to really do was like not pay attention to all the noise, yeah, which is so much easier said so than much. done. Even now, I'll when still it's loud. read comments and like the negative stuff, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't at all. Like sometimes I'll be like, "That's really funny and silly. I can't believe people think that." Like there was all these like rumors about my ex that I had bought my own engagement ring and like gave it to him to propose to me, or that he owned my apartment and I rented from him to seem more relatable. None of that's true. <laughs> like such wild, weird shit. And I was like, how do people come up with this? Right. And listen, like, like even if you Google me, there's so many false things about me on the internet. And I've just had to learn to really not let that bother me. I still will look at it sometimes. I think that it's, it would be like inhuman to not. Like, it's just, it's so natural I don't look. to, to want to see. That's amazing. I can't. I don't look often. I will tell you, it's like, once every few weeks. Right. Just like, what's the pulse right now? What are people saying? Because it's also helpful for the brand too if, if people are commenting about like one of our collections or like, I just like kind of like to be in the know mm-hmm. without letting it affect me negatively. Or I'll ask Alexa or Mo to look like, what do you guys think? What's what's happening right now? That was like the biggest thing I remember. I was like, stop yeah. looking, stop reading, stop. But now even if I look, it doesn't bother me. It That's really good. doesn't. I so think it's kind of funny. How do you think that? shift took place? I think, I mean, listen, there was a time during COVID and you know this, that I was having panic attacks daily, that I was borderline suicidal. Like I remember, oh God, I thought this podcast, I wouldn't cry. I remember this. Potentially that I was like in a car with my ex driving out to the Hamptons and like all the shit was going on. I'm like actually shaking. And I was like, I want to open this door and roll out of the car right now. And I was like, I really was like, I can't handle this anymore. I can't handle the way people are talking about me, my business, my my company, how unfair this feels. And I was just like, fuck, I don't want to be here anymore. And that was a really scary moment for me that actually probably catapulted me like turning things around. And then, you know, was able to do a lot of like self-work, was able to you know, work with you, talk to Stacey, like talk to friends and family and just sort of shift the way I was handling things. Cause I think for a long time, I wanted to defend myself and my company throughout every accusation that came my way. And I was, it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. It really was. And I was constantly putting it out there. And so people felt always the need to comment, whether it was good or bad. And granted, a lot of people would like come to my defense or send positive messages, but it was more of like, I was putting out this like stressful, chaotic energy and it was what was coming back to me. And it was so bad for my mental health. And so being able to like separate from that and take a step back and and not focus on that anymore and really just focus on the positive, like completely shifted my perspective and and my mental health. And, you know, it came with a lot of work, working with Erica, doing breath work. Yes, I was going to say. I love Erica. Like she saved me through so many times. And, you know, just like, me too. Yeah. I've cried with her. Yeah. Like, y- the first you- session I worked with her, I was hysterically crying and like almost started hyperventilating. I was like 
what what did you just do to me? This like breath work. It that, brings like, it up. Let everything out. And I felt very empowered by like the good feelings I would get from not putting out that negativity anymore and just being able to like compartmentalize and like talk about it when it needed to be talked about, but like also not focus on it anymore. And I got over that. I'm really grateful I got over that hurdle. You know, not everybody does. And that's what's really scary. And so I'm so grateful to be in such a positive place now and like to have come out of that a better woman, like a better, a better everything, like a better person. Um, but it was a really crazy time. I it was a crazy time for everybody. Like, I, yeah, the remember? Whole world. Like, it was crazy. It was yeah. tough. And I, I remember driving to you mm-hmm. when it was at a really bad place and like mm-hmm. grabbing you and being like, there's one common denominator in this entire situation. And it's all about how you handle it. Mm-hmm. That there's things that so are- So true. It, it's inevitable, right? It's like things can be portrayed. It, it doesn't matter what the situation is. It's that you're here. Yeah. So how can you, how can you rise above and how can yeah. you, and I, I remember this time so vividly because you were the reason I got introduced to the River Fund and you were getting really involved with the River Fund, an organization that takes poverty personally, they're like boots on the ground and are just doing the most incredible the work, you guys. Yeah. You shared a story that like people had, their plastic bags were ripping. This was- Oh yeah. And that I was just- the very beginning of COVID. Bald. Yeah. And, yeah. And like they couldn't bring their food to their family. We're talking right. about people who can't even put food on the right. table. And so just to give context, uh, the River Fund provides a food pantry every weekend that thousands of people in the New York area come to to get supplied with groceries to feed their families for the week. And a lot of what was happening during COVID and they were, it was so needed. During, more than ever, it was needed during COVID. It's always needed, but um, people were coming in lines and they're, the bags that they were bringing for the groceries were ripping and they couldn't carry their groceries home. And so I had shared about it and talked to Melissa about it, that we needed to get these people shopping carts. I was like, And I was already on the board up. of the River Fund and you had been there for volunteering, but like this was this like was it what brought me. it to a new level. Yeah, and I think it it's an interesting thing. I always say, like one thing that helps me during some of my hardest times too is instead of focusing on the chaos, because it will suck you in, it's a vortex, and then you can't breathe, you have anxiety attacks, you can barely sleep, Mm -hmm. is serving people who need help. Oh yeah. The river, we gave what in general, which is like the nonprofit arm of my business, has saved me in more ways than I can count. And I think especially throughout that really dark time and we get what continues, the whole thing was, we're gonna give back past the pandemic and we have, and we gave what has saved me in so many ways by allowing me to help others and actually see the impact. Like Mm -hmm. it's very boots on the ground, whether it's promoting a small business and helping them have a full career doing their small business and, um, you know, providing literal like aid for the river fund and, and supplies and all the things that we've done together. And you can see the difference that you're making. It's so visual and it feels so good. So it's almost like selfish work in a sense, because giving gives so much to your, to you. A hundred percent. And like, that's so beautiful. And, and that has saved me in so many different ways. But I think that shift, like that did something to you. For like, sure. Like your energy, that is one like massive pivotal moment. I remember where mm-hmm. it was like, you shifted your, your focus and your perspective to being yeah. towards something good. And mm-hmm. I mean, the messages, can we just talk about like when you post something for a small business, it literally makes my heart like grow inside. It's crazy to see, like we call it like a small business win or success or a we gave the we gave what effect. It's crazy to see how many dozens and dozens of small businesses have been able to now make this their full-time jobs and support families because of the promotion from just like my platform and the We Gave What community, you sharing about so many, like there's so many small businesses that you've helped us share about. And how fulfilling is that? Oh, the most. All you get is to feel good about it. Like, it's not like I have like equity in their businesses. Like 
all it is is sharing about people who have really awesome stuff going on and who really deserve it and have really great stories to tell. And nothing feels better. And than just that. giving them a platform. That's all we gave what is. It's a platform. Yeah. For people to just, yeah, to uplift others. What is next for you? Like you're just, what is next? What is, I mean, which way? Like, okay, so business wise, like these new categories are gonna be so fun. Um, I don't even know them. Yeah, you do. I've told you. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you do. (laughs) But, you know, growing We Were What and expanding um, is going to be really fun and cool. And that's really like my main focus. And then helping the companies that I'm involved in succeed is is also number one, like WellBell. I mean, the, can we just talk about your <laughs> hair transformation? The, is is the, the hair transformation on point with my like self transformation? Yes, too? actually, it's, because when we met, kind of your hair, hair was shoulder length. You had extensions, blonde fried, blonde fried. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all you wanted was like. Hair, you hair. wanted to focus on hair health and wow, can we just <laughs> zoom in on that hair? Oh my God. It's wild. I remember you're like, I want it long. It's longer than mine. It's right now I need a haircut. It well, well has long. done wonders for you and for so many. For so many of people. Your- it's such an amazing product. I really do feel so strongly and love it. And like, even like you've introduced me to Array and like- yeah. How great just, are they? I love them. I know. Joseph, she's amazing. Um, there's so many great companies out there. And so I love sharing about them, but really the ones that I- now have equity in and, and I'm a partner in and or advisor for are, are going to be my focus because those are the companies I believe in most. I only really get into bed or marry a company that I truly love. So focusing right. on helping them grow is really important. And then I'm really just focused on myself and living my best life. And I want to like figure out some travels for the summer and, you know, focus on my dating life. Like it's been really fun and fulfilling. Um, and I love making new connections, especially like deep connections. And <laughs> It's okay, cough. Cough. Yeah, cough. I thought you laughed. No, cough. I thought it was a laugh too because I said the <laughs> word deep and I thought you went sexual in your mind, which I know you did. <laughs> did you not? <laughs> did Tom joke? <laughs> I was joking. Sorry. You definitely said some things people are going to be like, oh, wow. I know. <laughs> it's been great. I just am really focused on having fun. I've worked so hard for so many years and I know I'm only 31. <laughs> You're so young. Just turned 31, but I'm ready to enjoy myself a little bit. And not, not that I haven't enjoyed myself over the years, but like, let me celebrate my success a bit. Let me like live my life and just have a lot of fun. That's like where I'm at right now. Ooh, chill. <laughs> it's such a good place and it really works for you. I also need to start writing my second book, Wait. which is, I have a meeting after this about it. So. I, you really are a force. Because I know you've been on me about writing mine, but I have my I title, know. I have my chapters, I have. Good, get yes. on it. It's, you need a good co-author or ghostwriter. I, I need it's, a co-author. I just, yeah. for me, I think where you and I are so different, like you're you're very similar to Noah, mm-hmm. where you're like, just do it and do it and write it. And I'm like, have to be in you this. You need to feel it. To I have it. to yeah. feel it. I have yeah. to like be in this flow. But also where, just do it. <laughs> Sometimes you have to just do it. What what business advice would you give for someone who's just starting out? Oof. Okay. I mean, like I'm an extremely decisive person. And I think that like that quick decision making that's also really thoughtful has really helped me over the years. Um, but I think what business advice can I give? For someone who's like, I want to do this thing. I mean, where do I okay, start? Okay, yeah. I think an, a really important lesson I learned early on was that it's okay to not know everything and to turn to other people for help. And that's why having the best business partners that also ethically and morally align with your values is so important. Like, I would never be able to do the production of We Were What the way that I am able to do it with my business partners. I'm not going to pretend to know, you know, one and two about production. It's super hard. And I've learned so much over the years, but I'm so thankful that I have partners that are really good at producing clothing. They're very good. They're very good. That's like what they do best. And where I thrive in that scenario is the actual designs, the marketing, the promotion, all of that. So I think that like find people that complement you, your strengths and your weaknesses. And obviously you've done this over the years and just make sure when you're, when you're finding your partners that your morals and values align. It's super important because then you'll run your business similarly. You'll treat your employees fairly and and how you want your company culture to be. And, and that's really important. And then I always say this, but like 
a reason I've succeeded so much is I've always been a fearless networker. I've never been afraid to go up to somebody you're, in a room. You're fearless. Shake their hand, firm handshake, introduce myself, make sure I get their information, follow up about it, set up a meeting, really... And also whenever I've met somebody, I've always done my research beforehand so I could find either something I can relate to them on or know something about their career or know what I want to say going into it. Not just like, hey, I'm Danielle and like, I'd love to, you know, meet with you for coffee. Like I want to have a purpose when I'm meeting somebody and I want to them to feel valued and, and, you know, bring something to the table for them as well. And I think that obviously being a fearless networker has just gotten me so far in my career. Where did you learn that? And it, it's just like something that's within me. Your dad? Maybe my dad. Stop it, Melissa. <laughs> she thinks my dad is hot. He's attractive. He's a good looking guy. He's a good looking guy. Um, and I love him. And I've gotten a lot of my like business savvy from him. Um, and yeah, he's instilled a lot in me for sure. But I think like the confidence that I that you said I've always had over the years that were masked by insecurities was even when I was like glasses and braces at sleepaway camp, I still thought I was hot shit. <laughs> like it was just something I always had. People ask like, where did it come from? I'm like, I don't know. I've always had it. Like, you actually did say this to me the first day that I came to you. I remember Mo was like <laughs> sitting behind in a stool and I was like, do you want to be alone? And Mo was like, no, I'm with her for everything. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, totally fine. And then it shifted yeah. where we were alone. But I understand that, mm-hmm. you know, protective layer. And we were talking, I'm like, you know, I really w- want to focus on getting you to a place of loving and really accepting yourself. You were like, oh, I think I'm hot. <laughs> I was like, okay, good. <laughs> like, at least we, yeah. we're starting with some. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've you were like, let me just like confidence. check you really quick that like, I think I'm one hot piece. <laughs> I mean, now so more than ever, but <laughs> I do feel like, like not only in the way I carry myself now, but I feel like the coolest, hottest version of myself now. And that all comes from within. I feel that way too. Yeah. Thank and you. it's it's not even necessarily just about the physical. It's this. I mean, look at you. I'm smoke. Listen. But you know, it comes from that like inner commitment to yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you do, I think you start to see yourself really as you are. And then it's like, that just brings on more love. And then Mm -hmm. you walk differently. Oh, totally. Like I walk differently than I did in my 20s. Like my shoulders are back, Mm -hmm. my posture's tall, belly Mm -hmm. plugs in. Like when you walk into a room and, and I think it's similar for me, it's like, you walk in with purpose. People know, people look like you walk in, even if you weren't Melissa Wood Health and had all these followers, you would walk into a room and people would be like, whoa, who's that? And that's uh, not just from the way you look. That's from the way you're carrying yourself. It's an energy. It's an energy thing. You it's have the that scent. when you walk. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. And somebody told me that last weekend because I had like all these guys coming up to me and it was really I, I, I witnessed it, by the way. And so I, was just like, I was like, you're like, <laughs> They flock. I thought it was so fun. And I was like, what's <laughs> happening? They're like, you have the scent. <laughs> it's because you are in a place where you have no pressure on yourself. Mm-hmm. You got in your head, I'm this age. I want this. I By the way, be- I'm freezing my eggs in January. Great. And I'm super excited about that because the no pressure thing. It are you doing? Is- we don't have to say with who. Oh, yeah, no. Okay. Um, but it just takes off so much more pressure. And it's like a great little like backup plan insurance policy. It's great. And I'm so excited about that because now I think there's zero pressure. Right. Because that's really the last thing that like a woman like at my age thinks about is like, okay, I want my eggs to be the healthiest so I can have healthy kids. And you can up until a, a later age I mean, for people sure. are having kids in their 50s still. Totally. You can have kids at any age. It's just more of having that insurance policy. And I'm just super excited. I'm going to do it, share about it, the whole thing. Okay, good. Because I know we spoke about that. We I did. Was like, just do something. And Noah, remember? Yeah. Noah was like, yeah. you should freeze your eggs just so that yeah, you like insure this for your yourself. We're going to do it. And I'm going to like post about it and hopefully empower other women to do it too. Good. I'm so glad. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I love you. I, I mean, love you too. You've been my, we've been each other's champions for many, many years in a way that's never felt competitive. It's never no. felt anything but supportive and like lovely and like just so 
nice. Like, I love our relationship so much. I count on you for so much. And um, I think we can count on each other for a lot, but I love you. I You're think a very special person in my life. Well, that means so much to me. And you have just been someone who's, you've been like, I'm like, it's just so proud to be able to like watch you go <laughs> from this place of like holding you when you were crying so many times to just believing in yourself and in a different way, not just in confidence of business in these things. It was like this real inner shift that you've had. And, and I will say all of the things have, have you know, they, yeah. they've made a difference. And I also just have to say the fact that you wrote about me in your book, like yeah, I could not believe, I was like, <laughs> <gasps> it was the really? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Of course. It's about my life and you're a big part of that. And the title was just so good. What because the everyone, title of the second one be? Just part two. You don't know yet? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't started writing it yet, so okay. we'll see. But I know what it will start with because the last page basically of the book kind of talked about my ex and being like, I met this new guy. Like, I really think he's the one. I hope he's the one. The first paragraph will be like, spoiler alert, he's not the one. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out. But here we go. Wait, that's really good. Yeah, something like that's that. That's a really good start. <laughs> okay, she's ready. This book's definitely releasing next year. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, we end with a few rapid fire. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. This is just a nice way to... Ready. Okay, she she will rapid the fire. The fact that we didn't even do any breath, breath work. work before we started is whoa. Did you do any today? None. But that's Danielle. Just, no, no, no. <laughs> no, but I've been I trying think, to get her to I meditate think that's first. Very time. cool that like we every time we've done something together or an event, you've always done, you know, <laughs> breathe in. You do I, the whole thing. I try to like ground you. You ground me, but I'm like pretty grounded. You're pretty grounded. Right now. You walked in grounded. Which means you've done your work for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the work for me. And you. I've done the work. You're doing the work. What is your biggest motivator? <sighs> That is a tough question. Mm -hmm. Think about it. What is my biggest motivator? What gets you up? What gets you going? What keeps you? It's going to be cheesy, but I just want to be like the hustle of New York City. Like I love New York. We're both diehard New Yorkers. I die for New York. I die for New York. And I just love the hustle of New York around me. And that's very motivating. Everybody's always hustling and I just want to hustle with them. It supports you. Yeah. Right? Like when people yeah. are like, how do you live there? Like, wouldn't you rather? And I'm like, I am a different person yeah. when I'm out East. I'm like- And I love that part. And you me love too. that in your LA version. I saw you yeah. just post about it. Yes. But like, we like kind of need that like nitty gritty hustle of New York to be like, mm. same. Yeah. Love. What is your end all be all self-care ritual? Like what's that Working one out. thing? Yes. Any type of workout. It doesn't even matter what it is. And Any you've workout. really like stepped that up. And you found a formula that works for you too. Yeah, where- like, I, like I'll do stuff I've learned with you, my own Pilates, a trainer, weight training, walking, everything. I'm not yeah. tied down to one type of workout. I think that's great. As long movement, moving. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. that was like the biggest thing that I think as long as you, I always say that. I'm like, mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be like doing me every day. Like people come up to me like, I do you a few days and then I take this class and I'm like, like good. Yeah. Like you have okay to, to find what works for you. Totally. And keeps you going. Any type of movement. It's Wait, just this is necessary. the last question, but I have one more question for you that just came up. <laughs> what is one thing people don't know about you that you feel like you'd like people to know? Because I think everyone thinks they really know you. Um, I mean, do you think people know how sensitive I am? No, that's what okay. I was going to say. Yeah, I'm super sensitive and and such a big heart. And like, I'm one of those people who can't go to bed in a fight and need to always resolve things and, and never want negative feelings with a friend or a lover or anything like that. And I'm very sensitive and I take a lot to heart and I'm really sensitive to others' feelings. And I want people to feel their best with me as well. And I always want to make sure I'm making people feel the, the best that I can. So I'm sensitive. You're sensitive. Which I don't give off because I'm like hard as a rock. That's what I was mm. going to say to you. Like yeah. that was the thing I think that I found the most endearing when we met was you portray, you do 
you portray this confidence. You're mm-hmm. tough. Yeah. But you're so soft inside. And I was like, I'm a super soft. It was really sweet. And I, I felt like <laughs> you all, like you really showed a lot of vulnerability when we were together. And mm-hmm. it just, there was just something where I was like, I'm taking her in. Yeah. I love that. But it's good. I like that you sh- you share a little bit more of that now. Yeah, I try to. Yeah. To a certain extent. There's a good balance. Okay. What does moving with heart mean to you? I don't even need to read the card. It just feels like I should pick them up because they're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> the, the podcast is called Move With Heart. What does it mean to you to move with your heart? <sighs> I think that if I have to just say off the cuff what it means to me, it means moving with putting yourself first. And I always say like the most important relationship is the one with yourself. And I think we can all agree that that's true. So I think moving with heart means moving with like yourself in mind and and with treating yourself nicely and, and caring about yourself. And and when you feel like the best version of yourself, you'll be able to help so many other people around you and have the best relationships with others. So like, yeah. Beautiful answer. Okay, cool. <laughs> this has been so, so fun. <laughs> good. I cannot wait to share this side of you because this is the side that I fell in love with when I was like, okay, cool. You're like, you have the best <laughs> style. I want all those things you're wearing, but like what... I care most about was like really getting to know you, mm-hmm. the part that people don't always see. And I think- Did we do it? it? We did it. I okay, thank yeah. you for feeling safe and comfortable, like I said in the beginning, because it's it means a lot to me. And I think you have stuff to share to help empower people. Well, thanks for having me and giving me the opportunity to share it. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Are we going to do a workout today? You will, a wait, full workout? Wait, should we do, should we like, we'll plan a workout. Yeah, yeah. For real. Oh, let's to let's get into a little you. bit of a system. Okay, this is like last thing. Oh. <laughs> if you keep this in, like my favorite thing in the world is to be touched by Melissa. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Just like her touch, like, she like puts her hand on my back. I'm like, oh, it's like, it's almost, it's almost slightly sexual, but not. It's so... Uh, but when you touch me, when no. we work out, I, I would say like working out with you, the thing I miss the most is being touched by you. <laughs> yes, getting to spend more time with you, but like the touch of Melissa, <laughs> if you ever get to feel it at an event and she puts her hand on your shoulder, it's just so special. I don't know why, it just is. I'm going to make sure that I go around the room and like, it's my, you yeah, feel you my, know when you, it's you energy. feel that I really love. You like, like adjust, it's like a slight adjust. There's love, like there's energy in my yeah. touch. You're yeah. not, the, Kim always says that too. Yeah. She's like, there's something about your hands. Your hands. <laughs> Those long, beautiful fingers. My natural nails. Love it. TikTok's coming for your manicure. <laughs> True. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 